This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. I think it's it's very deep. I think it's uh, it's uh, it's very amazing. I think that people are very fast. Trying to trying to run away from from the real from the real purpose of life, from the real mission under the sky. And and I know that my my testament, I know that my the wisdom that I'm sharing is is based on my life experience, on what that I went through, on on what that I did, what that I experienced. And it's not immediately committing you and saying things about you and like you don't have to to accept all of my all of my words just because I'm saying them. The, the only thing that there is is that if you find my message fit and similar to your inner wisdom, to your thoughts, so then you can learn from me. If you, if you feel like it, if you feel that it's speaking to you as well. So in the beginning of, of, of my search, I was, I was not searching for, for no kind of religion. I was not searching for Judaism, for Torah, for, for Hashem, for mitzvot. It's, it was not part of my energy, of my flow, of my wisdom, of my will. I was searching for, for truth. I was searching for, for, for meaning of my, for my life. I was, I was looking for, for for inner completion, for satisfaction, for I wanted to remove huge amounts of sorrow, of pain that I was carrying through my childhood and, and my youth. And since I was searching for the answer to all of my questions, so the answer came in the face of the Creator. That was my answer. That was the answer that I, f that I felt. But very fast that journey failed with me becoming religious and dropping that inner search of the truth and choosing religion. Now, I'm not saying that the religion is false, because what that brought me to the religion, to be observant, to keep Shabbat, to eat kasher, and to keep all Torah and mitzvot, and I'm very strict in my life, I'm very strict. And even if not always being able to keep every single halakha, I'm, I'm checking myself and I'm judging myself on every small, tiniest halakha if I'm not keeping it properly. I'm doing tshuva on it and I'm trying at least as much as I can with the tools and the wisdom that Hashem gave me not to move from the tiniest paragraph in the Shulchan Aruch to keep all the halakha not moving to the sides. And even if I am finding myself in the sides, I'm always running back, always doing tshuva, always trying to... Now, there are ways that people understanding halakha. There might be situations in my life that I will feel that I am keeping halakha, but someone else that uh, lives in Williamsburg is going to tell me that I've been drifted and I'm not keeping halakha. Okay? You're going to be a Yemenite that lives in Gedera in Israel and he won't feel that I'm keeping Halakha. Okay, I understand. I cannot fulfill 
uh, I cannot satisfy all the people in the universe. But Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is saying that the difference between the righteous ones and those ones that are not righteous is that the righteous ones realize that you cannot satisfy everyone else, so they're trying to satisfy Hashem. And the rest of the world, they, they think that they need to satisfy people, so they're doing as much as they can to satisfy everyone. But they're working for people instead of serving the Creator. So, as an individual, so for a long time already, I, I finished with that to try to satisfy people. And I'm focusing as much as I can on doing what that Hashem wants me to do. Now, here is that point where the religion becomes to be an obstacle for the person, not because that it's not true, it is true. Every halacha, every rule in the Jewish books that is guiding you how to keep halacha by the traditional way, under the guidings of the righteous ones through all the generations is complete and true and needed and required to every person in a different situation, he will find it necessary to read that halakha and to know that rule and to keep it and to find a way how to keep it in his life. But when you lose your inner desire for the truth, when you lose your search for the truth and you're satisfying yourself with keeping halakha and you say, I'm keeping halakha and by that I'm fulfilling my obligation to the Creator that's the moment that you went off the path of, of the truth. That's when you became religion in my slang, in my language, became religious and you lost your soul. Because if for you the mission is just to follow halakha, to keep halakha, so where is the humanity? Where is your your connection to the Creator. Now, the real truth is that also inside the halacha, also inside the Jewish rules, in the obligations, in the Bible, the Creator is talking to us in a language, in a way that will wake up our spirits to follow Him with passion. For an example, in Kiyat it's written, that Hashem is asking us that those words that He's commanding us are going to be carved on the board of our hearts. Those things that I'm commanding you today on your heart. And you need to tell them and to say that again and again and repeat and repeat to your children. So some people are going to destroy their kids. Why are you not putting tefillin? You must do this, you must do that. That's not the will of Hashem. Hashem wants you to have the passion, the desire, that you will come happy to the house and going to inspire your family, inspire your children, going to bring the fire of happiness to the house, not the fire of arguments and rules and, 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 and control over their minds. And you should talk, saying those things in your house. When you're in your house, when you're going on, on your journeys, in your travels, on your way, always. And before you go to sleep and when you wake up. So there are going to be people that are going to always try to say words of Torah. And in every suda, they're going to open a book and going to read the verse or something. And they're drying out the wisdom. They're drying the, the, the message of Hashem. For an example, you want to sing songs of Shabbat. So it's an amazing thing to sing songs. So everyone are buying Zmirot Shabbat, that small book that you put, the songs of Shabbat. 
and no one knows the tunes, no one knows the music, and even if you as the man, the husband of the, of the house, so you've been to some Suda Shlishit, you've been to some events, occasions in Shabbos, so you heard some, you've been to Uman, you've been hosted in some families, okay, you, you have your tradition from your house, from your family, great, now you're trying to force your children to sing with you, you're trying to force your wife to sing with you. If she doesn't like those songs, if those songs are written in Hebrew, and your family cannot understand the words, and maybe also you cannot understand the words. So what are you doing? It's not fun. And you made it to be not fun because of your desire to follow the guidings of Judaism. And you just destroyed Shabbat. Instead of sitting with a smile on your face in Shabbat and finding your songs and making it nice, singing it with your wife, with your children, making that Shabbat a family event, event of the kids, of the family, and then you will enjoy. Because if you're going to try to force it, so okay, one year, two years, seven years, in the end, that's it. You won't be able to continue, and if you will, you're going to continue alone. Even in the same house without divorce and without kids that went off the derech. Just you, you're gonna, you're gonna be there on your own. You're just gonna be there alone. You won't feel the, the love and the joy and the happiness only because that you built it ideally in the first place in a bent way, in a wrong way, without understanding the clear and honest message of the Creator that is telling you, hey, I'm with you, relax, I love you. That's the message of Hashem. Now, people that are teaching in classes and, and, and rabbis online, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous to go to classes, to hear halakha, to go to more halakha classes. It's a dangerous thing. Now, I'm not saying don't learn. Learn as much as you can learn, learn. But you need to bring out the real purpose of the learning from, the, from, from that time that you're spending in, 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 in learning Torah. It must bring you to actions. Which actions? Good actions. That people will be happy to see you. That when you keep Torah mitzvot, people will enjoy your wisdom. That your conclusion is going to go in the right direction. That people will find comfort in your words. That people will connect themselves to the Creator after talking to you, after seeing you. How can it be? How it will happen? How it will take place in your life? Only if you're going to keep your attributes, your midot, your smile on your face. If you're going to be human. If you will keep yourself awake, connected to the will of the Creator. And not going to just follow the rules and follow the, the dark letters that are written in the pages, in those amazing books. There is much more to it than in the quotes that you remember and those lectures that you heard. There is a purpose, there is a mission. There are thousands of Batei Midrash and hundreds of thousands of people are sitting and learning Torah every day. And where is Mashiach? Can you feel and sense Mashiach in all the Frum communities, in all the radical, strong, very strict communities? Can you sense Mashiach? Can you sense redemption? And if you're a Breslev or Hasid, okay, let's talk a little bit Lashon around Breslev, okay? You're allowing me? A little bit, let's. I love Rabbi Nachman. I think he allows me to speak in his name. In Breslev, Boeret Esh, there is a fire flaming in Breslev. Oh, yeah, okay. I've been to Uman. I've been there. We want to say that we feel Mashiach over there, but people are being stabbed every year in Uman. And people are drunk every year in Uman. And people are taking drugs every year in Uman. And people are disgracing the name of Rabbeinu every single year in Uman. And people are doing horrible things in Uman. 
And we want to say that we see Mashiach over there. Yes, I also want to say that I see Mashiach over there. I see a lot of good over there. But to tell you that it's clean, that this is the face of redemption, that this is the salvation, I don't know. Not yet. There is much more to do. Much more to do than to go into deep in the lake and not to look at that cross that they built over there and to fight with the Russians and to hide from the Ukrainians and to do this. It's a mess. That's not the message. Abenu was so holy. Abenu is such a holy and fantastic and gentle person that never hurt a human being in his life. He never insulted a person ever in his life. So if you're still pushing and if you're still arguing and if you're still fighting the airports on the way to Uman, the airports on the way back from Uman, that's not Rabbeinu. That's not Rabbi Nachman's Rosh Hashanah. That's not a Rosh Hashanah sheli ole ala kol. My Rosh Hashanah is above everything. That's not Rabbeinu's intention. Oh no, those are the obstacles. Those are the many ot. That's not the many ot. You're satisfying. You're, 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 you're justifying your bad midot and your friend's bad midot and allowing horrible things to happen, to take place in life, in this world, because you don't have the power to, to win, to overpower your evil inclination. Because you're also a little bit drunk, because you're also a little bit stoned, because you're also a little bit violent and, and cursing a little bit and pushing once in a while. So you don't have the power to win it because you're in it. But when you will be clean from it, you won't be part of the mess. And in every place that you, your, le your legs will, will stamp, your footsteps will, 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 will glow, will shine. Every place you'll get in will change because of how gentle you will be over there, how nice that you will be, the, the good example that you will give when you will step into that room. You will change the atmosphere. You will bring down clarity and good midot and nice manners and behaviors. Rabbeinu said that even kings can send their children, the princes, to learn manners from him, the way of the land, behavior. Today, between the Hasid de Breslev, someone can teach manners, someone can teach how to behave. When rabbis are shouting and fighting online and cursing and arguing with each other, and everyone are talking, that section are fighting with that section, and if you're part of that section, so you cannot come into this synagogue, you cannot pray in this shul, you cannot do this, so you're this, you're that. You're... Definitions and dividings and argument and sections and... and... That's not Breslev. That's not Breslev. And in Judaism, same thing. You have groups, you have sections, you have, you, have, you, have, you have dividings, you have separations. That's not those holy tribes that are flowing together, flying four feet above the ground in, in the desert. The Judaism of today, this is not that dream that we had, that we were living Two or three thousand years ago, until the destruction of our temple. The unity and the love and the peace and the harmony. We lost those things and we must fight for those. If you're going to try to be as strict as you can and as strong as you can and to keep Shabbat from, keep Shabbat from the half of the day, from 12.30 until 12.30 in the next night, okay, Five days of Shabbat you can keep. You won't bring peace to the world. If you won't smile, if you won't be nice, if you won't hug your friends, if you won't be a gentle and nice and loving and kind person, you will not going to bring redemption to the world. Talmidei Chachamim, real wise scholars, Marbim Shalom Ba'olam, they're increasing the level of peace in the world. If you're not making peace, if you're creating arguments as a person, 
Check yourself as the person in the gas station, in the grocery store, with your parents, with your friends, in your house, in your community, in your synagogue. Who are you? Are you making peace? Are you bringing redemption? Are you bringing salvation? When you're cooking, when you're talking, when you're wearing your, your, your outfit, when you're going to the mikveh, when you put on your sneakers and go jogging, who are you? That's what you need to check all of the time. Your fingers should check your own pulse. Who are you? Who am I? Who am I when I'm learning? Who am I when I'm teaching? Who am I when I'm thinking? Who am I when I'm praying? Who am I when I'm singing Zmirot Shabbat? Who am I when I'm dancing in the breast of Shul? Why am I dancing in that breast of Shul? Why am I dancing? Am I dancing for my friends to like me? Am I dancing because I'm too scared to deal with my fears? And I now found that outlet, the breast of Shul, and here I'm going to dance, and here I'm not going to feel anymore, and here I won't be scared anymore, and here I'm surrounded with young people, and it's great. So you're off track. You're not in the right place. Mentally, inside of yourself, you're not in a good place. If you're running away from dealing your own fears, your own darkness, you're in the wrong place in your life. And you can be in the most holiest, the, the, the most famous synagogue in the world, in the, in the beautiful, most beautiful community. If you are not representing good if you are not good, you, check yourself. Am I good? Am I nice? Am I kind? Do I love? Do I care about my friend? Do I care? Really, where is my heart now? What am I doing? Am I fulfilling my obligation to the creator of the universe? Or I'm just following the rules. I'm just part of the community. I'm doing what that everyone else are doing. If you're not representing the Creator, if you're not asking yourself what the Creator wants from me, what is my mission, and then trying to go all the way with it, with no fear, with no fear. As long as we let our fears control our lives, we don't have faith in the Creator. To have faith in the Creator, it's to have faith in someone that is above Nature means that you should believe that wonders that belong in a different place can take place in your life. If all day long you're thinking about money, what's going to happen, and how I'm going to pay, it, mean, it doesn't mean that you're bad. It means that you have not bought that faith and confidence in the Creator yet, so you need to work on yourself. It's not your time to work on other issues yet. If you don't count on Hashem, if your faith doesn't bring you to happiness, to satisfaction from life, to feel good about yourself, to know that you're marching towards Zion, that you're going to conquer, your, 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 your goal is divine, that you're going to win, that you, Hashem is with you, He's protecting you, defending you. If you're not strong, where are you? It means that Hashem is not with you. <coughs> if you would check yourself and you would find yourself innocent and good and righteous and kind and nice, you would feel the inner confidence that Hashem is with you. You wouldn't be so scared every moment of your life. You're scared because you're separated from Him. Not because that He might separate Himself from you. He will never gonna leave you. Hashem will never gonna back off on you. He will never gonna turn His face on you. The question is, where your face is aimed? What are you looking at? Are you looking at filthy pictures? Are you looking at filthy things? Your mind is wandering in filthy places? I'm not criticizing. I'm not talking about the act itself. I'm talking about your mentality. I'm talking about your spiritual level. Where are you holding? If you're holding in a place like that, that filthy things are satisfying you, relaxing you, you need to work on yourself.
You cannot think that Shabbat, if you will keep it, will erase your spiritual level that is very low. You cannot think that if you're going to sing songs of Shabbat in Hebrew, in the Breslev, ancient old tunes, it's going to help you with the fact that you just insulted and broke the spirit of your, of your wife. If you don't have the sensitivity to understand that you share your life with a human being, with a person, so where are you? And who cares about your songs in Shabbat? Shabbat Shalom, you need to have peace in your house in Shabbat. How are you going to make peace? How you make peace? You need to have appreciation, understanding, conversations, long conversations. That's why Hashem made politics for us. We're going to see how hard it is to make peace. That we're going to learn. You need to negotiate. You need to bring issues to the table. You need to discuss them. You need to talk about all the details. You need to compromise. That's why our mezuzah is tilted to the side. You know, the Allah is saying, you have two methods on how to put the mezuzah in your, on, 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 in your house. One method, one way, is to put it straight like that. The other way that the Allah is saying is to put it like that. And Rabotenu, the wise, righteous people, they chose the middle. How can it be? If you have halakha about every other issue in the world, that one method is saying to the right, another method is saying to the left, you're going to compromise? Never. You're going to choose one of the methods. If this is kosher, and someone else is saying that this is kosher, but they're arguing, that one is saying that that one is not, that one is saying that that one is not, so now, what you're going to do, you must choose. The al are going to make a psak, they're going to come to a conclusion, to a decision, and they're going to set a decision, a rule, a final rule, that will say that one of them is the right one, and the other one is not kosher. You're not going to find the middle. You're going to say which of them is more closer to the, to, the, to the truth and you're going to choose it. And the other one is dropping, is falling. But in mezuzah, they chose the middle. Why? Because mezuzah represents peace in the house. Mezuzah, you put it in the entrance to your house to teach you that you need to compromise, that you need to find the golden path, the middle way understanding that you need to bend yourself when you're getting into the house. So if you're not holding in that place, you still need to work on your attributes, on your manners, on your humanity, on your sensitivity. When I'm looking at pictures of my family from six years ago, from ten years ago, I'm embarrassed. Today, I apologize to my wife. I told her, I didn't appreciate you enough. And I'm saying it from the blood of my heart, from the pains that I'm carrying within, that for years I didn't recognize the real amazing beauty of my wife. How gentle she is, how nice she is, how kind she is. And it's not because that my wife, you don't know. No, only because that she's my wife and I'm respecting her, I can appreciate and see her real quality, who she really is, you're going to find it with your wife if you're going to learn how to respect her. My wife is not better than your wife. My wife, she's my wife. That's her part in the deal. Your wife is that beauty and that amazing creation for you. So you need to understand that you want to appreciate her on her good things. And not to think and take those things for granted. Like, it's obvious that she's cooking. It's obvious that she's making the laundry. It's, why is it obvious? How you came to that conclusion that it will be so obvious that someone will clean for you, that someone will take care of things for you? Why, how, how come? Which twisted mind taught you that that is the right way? Who taught you that? Your violent father or your grandfather? 
that he's taking it also for him somewhere very, very bad, very, very selfish, very, very rude, not considering, not caring. Where is it coming? Where that tradition that someone needs to bring your slippers, that someone needs to fold your laundry, that someone needs to cook for you, where is it coming from? Where? I saw that when guests came to the house of Abraham Avinu, Abraham and Sarah, so Abraham was preparing the food, Abraham was taking care of the guest. He was running, he was bringing them in. He ran to slaughter to, to the, the animals. He ran to cook and he cut the, 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 the good, most quality and tasty parts of the animal. He, like, it doesn't read in that Sarai Menu she was cooking. It's written that Abraham Avinu was taking care of everything. Where is Sarah? She's minding her own business. She's doing something. She's in the tent. What is she doing? No one knows. It's written that Sarah was higher than Abram in prophecy. In her level of prophecy, she saw Hashem in a higher level than her husband. Why do you think that you are so intelligent and wise and higher than your wife because you're a scholar, because you're sitting and learning Torah? And who said that it's really bringing you to a higher level than your wife? Do you know spiritual, spiritually in which level you're holding and in which level she holds because you're learning Torah? I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, and I'm very scared to lie, I'm a very honest person, and I have a lot of faith in Hashem, and I know that Hashem is judging me all of the time. I can tell you for sure that my wife, she is much more sensitive and wiser than me, closer to the truth than I, and I see it on a daily basis. But I spent hours and days and months and years learning Torah in, in Bete Midrash, in Yeshivot. I had a period of time of maybe six, seven years that I was learning at least, at least nine hours every day, almost without talking. And I was reading from at least 40, 50 books every day. And I was finishing at least seven pages of Gemara every single day. And I was breaking myself to pieces and I had at least one year, one year and a half that I was not sleeping on bed. I was sitting on a chair, learning, not going to sleep at nights, staying awake, barely sleeping one hour every night, sitting. I was making tikkun chatzot every night and I went to Uman three times a year and I was breaking myself to pieces. And I was distributing Torah and I went over oh, in the nights and, 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 and knocking on doors of people and opening conversations with people and selling books and I was making thousands and thousands of hours of it bodedut. About myself, I can tell you that at least, at least three times in my life for 40 days straight, I made six hours it bodedut every day. So it's at least 120 times, at least, minimum, that I made six hours in Bodadut every day, one day after the other. Except of that, I did at least, maybe, I don't know, 200, 300 times, at least, another six hours in Bodadut on different occasions, on different days. I had times in my life that, and of course, that at least 15 years I haven't missed almost even once one hour in Bodedut minimum every day. And Mikveh for at least 15 years every day. And even in the night after Yom Kippur and in the night after, after Tisha B'Av also going to the Mikveh. And not to the mikveh in the neighborhood. Going in Jerusalem, I didn't know where to go. To. I would drive for an hour to the sea, to springs, to lakes, to whatever to find. With a lot of mesirut nefesh. I, 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 I puked blood for Hashem. Not, not literally. 
My rabbi was sick once. I went. I did six hours with what they did for him. It's a crazy story. We went to the north to do six hours with what they do to pray for him to, to get better. And and the, 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 there is a mikveh in Tveria that belongs to, to, to the Rav Kook, to Rabbi Kook. It's in a place that's called Be'er Miriam in, in Tveria. There's a gas station named Be'er Miriam, the well of Miriam. And over there, in the basement, they built a mikveh for him. He's got a, an office over there, a bed. And he's allowing people to come and to dip over there, but you need to get a permission. So we got a permission once and we went to dip over there. And I went into the water, it's freezing water, and it was, it was a crazy thing. I went under the water dipping and suddenly I had that thought in my mind, you're not going out for the mikveh. Not not in my will. I like you're not making it out. Like you're you're go you're gonna die here. You're not gonna make it. And I felt like something is holding me under the water that I cannot take my head out. And I was struggling with that thought. I couldn't feel someone is grabbing me or something. It wasn't like it was a thought. You are not going out of the mikveh. And I I didn't know what to do with that. And then I reminded myself, okay, the reason that you're here is to pray for your rabbi. So do it. And I prayed and I prayed and I'm thinking and hoping and praying and praying and screaming for him. And I know that I'm, I'm not making it out from the mikveh for him. I knew it. It was like I'm about to die and I realized it, that I'm, I'm dying here now in the mikveh. I'm drowning. And nothing happens, it's just freezing water and that thought, you're not going out of the mikveh. And for, I don't know, I was a swimmer when I was young, so for me one minute and a half is, is, is an option under the water. Two minutes, it's an option. So I think, I assume that I was at least two, two and a half minutes under the water suffocating. <laughs> And in the end, I went out from the water when I completed my prayer. And then I puked blood outside to the sewer, to, to where it's going out. I, 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 I start coughing and I puked blood. And the next day, they gave us the good news that he felt much, much better, Bo Hashem. But many people went and prayed for him and everyone had his share in praying for him to, to heal. But I did my part. But still, with all of what that I sacrificed, I can tell you for sure, in 100%, with no doubt, and I'm not lying, my wife is in a higher spiritual level than I. And she was not doing all those learnings, and she was not doing all those six hours in Bodhidut, and she was not going to Uman three times a year, and she was not going and doing Tikkun Chatzot, and she was not driving to graves of righteous people in the north and in Tveria, and in, 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 in all the rest of the places that I went to. No, she was not. She was a simple person, raising our children, and helping, and doing whatever. She was a very nice person. But she was not walking in those high moves of becoming an angel when she was... 30, and I was, but I can tell you for sure that she is holding much, much closer to the truth than I. How? First of all, I can tell you that only because that I learned how to respect her and how to appreciate her, so now I can see it. How she reached it, probably it's the nature of her creation. Hashem made her to be in a higher level than I. It doesn't make her better than me. But I wouldn't sense it, I wouldn't see it, I would never recognize it unless I would work on myself to listen to her always and to care about her thoughts even when it was very disturbing, even when it was against my will, even if it was in my ears against halakha, against rules, against what that was right. Only the fact that I put a lot of effort on listening to her, caring about her, 
it gave me the ability to recognize her real emotional and spiritual beauty, who she really is in her essence, in the nature of her creation. And I would never recognize it because of hearing classes or reading in the books or, or, or doing all those hours of, of prayers. Only the inner war against your laziness, against your bad midot, your bad temper, only working on your patience, only trying with all the power that you can find to try to listen and to care and to understand and to appreciate, to have gratitude. Only in that battlefield you can, you can find those sparks, you can find those diamonds. And that is the success of life. The success of life is not those seven pages of Gemara a day. It's not to finish us a few times in your lifetime. It's not to wake up every night to do chatzot. I'm telling you, it's nothing. Those things are nothing compared to what that you can achieve as a real respectful, nice, loving person. If you will have the good attributes, that's why it's written, Derech Eretz Kadmala Torah. First of all, have the manners the way of the land, learn how to behave, how to care, how to love, how to appreciate. And then with that, if you're going to go and learn Torah, every diamond, every verse will, 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 will grow, will be a seed that will bloom and will grow and will make wonders in, in your world. Every verse that you will bring in, every paragraph that you're going to learn, every line from every book will make you an angel on earth but not the verses themselves. The verse is that seed, but you need to plant it in a humble, soft, rich ground, earth. And that's you. That's your midot. That's your manners. That's your way of behavior. That's your midot. That's who that you choose to be. Into that, you're bringing the Torah that you're learning. You're bringing the actions that you're doing. The chatzot, the songs, the dancing, the whatever you do, the cleaning for Pesach, everything. Screaming at your wife, fighting with your children, arguing, hating people around you. You're not in the right place. That's not the will of the Creator. That's not His will. He wants you humble. He wants you with Him. With Him means with love, a lot of love, a lot of understanding, a lot of compassion to yourself. If you think that Hashem, He expects you to be righteous, so you don't see the whole picture, you don't understand. If Hashem would have wanted you to be righteous, He would create you as a righteous creation, as a righteous human being. He made you scarred. He made you broken. He made you with failures, with, with weaknesses. He made you bent. He brought you down to this world in a certain house, to a certain family, with a certain friends, with community, with certain life experience that broke your nature, that destroyed your self-esteem, that made you have those weaknesses that you have today. That's who Hashem wants you to be. Now from that place, He wants you to call Him. <coughs> from that place that it's your creation, it's who that He made you to be, from that place, He wants you to serve. He wants you to reconnect yourself to Him. So if your way is to do tshuva, it's to come back to faith. So that's what He wants from you. So don't feel bad with yourself that you're a Baal tshuva. Because you're missing the point. That's your greatness. <coughs> That's your mission. On that you will be rewarded. From that, the, 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 your, the fruits of your trees will be sweeter. If you're going to put the effort in the right spot, in those places that Hashem made for you, if you're going to work on those things in your life that are important, that were neglected, that were forgotten, 
Those things in your life are the things that Hashem wants you to work on. He doesn't need you in the seven pages. He doesn't need you in the early hours before dawn. If that's not your work, if those are not the things that are really in reality in your priority, it's not your job right now. Maybe one day you want to pray for it, pray for it, no problem. But if you wake up before of dawn, at noontime, going to destroy your family, so it's not your job. If for you to wake up before of sunrise, going to make you an angry person at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it's not your job. Those are not your hours. It's not your mission yet. Put it, mark it in your diary, write it down for you. Another issue to pray for, I want to wake up early. Great, wonderful, pray for it. With the years, with the time, with the effort, with your skills that you're going to develop, you're going to make it as well. But as for now, if you're waking up before of 8, before of 9, if you're all tense and tired and cranky and angry and nervous, so don't wake up before. Do us a favor, <laughs> you know, for us, for the community. We need you calm and relax. If you're losing your mind at 3 o'clock because you woke up to pray nets, you're not part of that minion. Can't you see it? And even if everyone over there are crazy like you, it doesn't make it good. It doesn't make it kosher. You need to check yourself. Where am I holding? What does Hashem want from me? I have my wife. I have my house. I have my family. I have my financials. I have my level of confidence. I have my faith. I have my emotional pain. I have my own trauma. I have my own backpack that I'm carrying for years. Okay, what's the deal? Where am I starting? You need to start with the most painful points that you find. Your back hurts? Start with your back. Your heart hurts, start with your heart. Your mind hurts, start with your mind. The halakha hurts, okay, go learn halakha. If the halakha is the problem in your life, okay, so go learn halakha, no problem. If that's really your problem, that you're not learned enough, okay, go, 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 go learn. If that's the main problem in your life now, that's why your house is not functioning, because you don't know the Jewish rules, Okay, go learn. But if still you don't know how to behave, if you don't know how to say Shalom Aleichem, Hi, how are you? What's going on? Oh yeah, I'm happy. Thank you, thank you. If you don't know how to smile, don't know how to, 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 to say thank you on food that's been served to your table, if you don't really appreciate it, you, you know how much time it takes to make Shabbat, to make food for Shabbat, to make food for meal? You, you're emptying the plate in two and a half minutes, you know how many hours people were standing and breaking their hands and their legs and their back for that meal? Two and a half minutes of, 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 of throwing food in, into, your, into your stomach? Where's the balance? She was standing for six hours to prepare Shabbat. Two and a half minutes it took you to clean the table. Now, where's the balance? Oh, thank you. Todaba. Todalecha, thank you. Okay, that's it. It's not it. You need to understand. Would you stand for six hours every Friday, every Thursday night to prepare food for, 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 for a whole unit? For children, for guests. Oh, now, yeah, I'm bringing guests. But what are you talking about? What do you mean I'm bringing guests? Yeah, I have a friend. So what? What's the connection? You want to ask? Okay, let's talk about it. What you will feel about it? How would you feel about it? What do you think? That person, is it good? Not good? Oh, she's got issues. Now you made her problematic. Maybe she's right. Maybe you don't know how to pick your friends. Maybe you have issues. Maybe your friends are not such superstars like you think that they are. Maybe she's got reasons why she doesn't want those guests. Check it. Check it with eyes of truth. You made some mistakes in your life, so give it a shot. Try to listen to the voice of Hashem that is talking to you through your beloved ones. Instead of shutting their mouths all of the time, ignoring their thoughts, erasing their opinions, listen. Listen, it's Hashem that is talking to you. It's Hashem that is helping you to go on track to the right path, on the right route. 
to be an honest person, to be a sane person, to be a sober, awake person, a caring and loving person, appreciating, understanding, with compassion, with gratitude. Those are the foundation. With that you can grow. If you don't have that, you're just walking on air. You're building your buildings on air. It will fall. It can fall after five years. It can fall after 10 years. For some people, that dream was holding for 30 years, for 40 years. And then, like, uh, 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 house of cards house, house of cards in one second oh he divorced but why why that's a long story he was ignoring her for 35 years crazy my mother before she divorced my father after 18 years of marriage she asked him tell me one time that you love me what he answered to her you know what I feel about you he said, if you're not going to say one time, I love you, we're going to divorce. He said, I'm not going to say it. You know what I feel about you. Great. Great. Maybe she knew, but it wasn't enough for her, so she divorced. Some people cannot say, I love you. Some people, when they say, I love you, they don't understand what they... Oh, yeah, I'm t I tell her. Yes, I tell her. I love you. That's not it. You should love her. You should really love her. But what if I don't love my wife? If you don't love your wife, so you're in a worse situation. It means that you're so selfish, so self-centered, that you cannot recognize how much there is to love in your wife, that you're blind, that you don't see that it's your wife, that she's carrying the highest part of your soul inside of her. You hate yourself. You, it's not that you don't love your wife. You don't recognize her soul, that it's your soul. You're so divided from your own soul, you're so separated from who that you are spiritually, that you cannot recognize the beauty of your wife. For you, she is an enemy. For you, she is an obstacle. For you, she has difficulties. For you, she's stubborn. She is all of your definitions. You see your own lackings in the mirror, looking at her, not recognizing Hashem, that is your soul within. Seeing her as a problem. All connection to the truth, all connection to the Torah, all connection to the Creator, start with an inner search for the real truth. The truth that will commit you to make another step toward the truth and another step toward the truth. It's a never-ending, developing process. Never-ending. In every step you're going to make, you're going to understand that you have not accomplished anything yet and you need to make another effort and to try again. And then it will commit you to make another step and to try again and to restart and to retune yourself and to, to, to check again. And by doing that, you will achieve such amazing levels that you cannot imagine. There were righteous people that didn't have time to learn. There were righteous people that were too busy. They were running and saving pe people out of prison, saving lives of people, teaching all day long, raising their own children, whatever, taking care of orphans, giving charity, whatever, didn't have time to learn. Not everyone's supposed to be scholars. Not everyone's supposed to sit and learn for 8, 12 hours every day. Not everyone are like that. Not everyone. And maybe you're not like that as well. It doesn't make you bad. Maybe it makes you bad in the eyes of those people that want to create for themselves an environment that will allow them to be only scholars and not to have to be working on their attributes. So they're creating that fence around them, forcing everyone to learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. And you must learn and without learning and only learning and learning and learning. Now they build that wall so high, so tall, that no one can rebuke them. And they have all the, 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 the sources and quotes to justify their own mistake. 
learning, learning, learning. It's written in Pilkavot that the main reason for learning is to take that learning into actions. If you're not in touch with your family, if your children cannot sit on your knees and learn from you because they hate you, because they can't stand your company, if you can't have a long conversation with your wife into the night that she will share, that she will tell you, where is that relationship starts and where is it finishing? In your fantasy that you're so righteous and what's going to happen to you after 120 years? When in heaven's court your wife is going to stand and going to say, he was the most lousiest friend in the world, I'm not forgiving him. He abused me for years, I was his slave. What are you going to do? What, what you what's going to be the weight of your Torah after a line like that from your soulmate, from the partner that Hashem put with you? Isn't she also one of Hashem's children? What are you going to answer then? She will say, I lived my life alone. I was always alone. I was alone. He was learning, he was with his friends, he was in the synagogue, he was in the Beit Midrash, he was in Uman, he was here, he was there, he was in Suda Shlishit. I was alone. I was cooking alone, I was cleaning alone, I was raising my children alone, I was taking care of the bills alone, I was running, I was going, I was buying for him his underwear, his underpants, his socks, I did everything alone. What are you going to say? I was learning Torah. You think it's going to save you? No, really, do you think it's going to save you? It's not going to save me, for sure. I know that. It cannot be that to live your life on the account of someone else, on the back of someone else, is worthy and justified in the eyes of Hashem. It cannot be. Your wife, she's an angel, she's crazy, she's sending you to learn, really, she's got that flame, okay, you married some divine person, I don't know. I really never met a person like that in my life, really, literally. And I met Rebetzins, and I met a lot of, of students of mine, and I met thousands of people in my life. Never really met a person that is such a flaming fire. I never met. I met some very big righteous people, but they were still people. They were still people. Those pillar of fire, so-called, when, when I came down a little bit more to the truth of, of who that they are, I realized that we're talking about crazy people, sick people that are ignoring their emotions and choosing the path of learning, 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 instead of being connected to reality. They're divided from their families, they're divided from, 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 from life. Not because they're angels, just crazy. And they chose the path that will, will, will give them the... the, the, the uh, they won't be defined as crazy. They can say, no, I'm righteous, no, I'm learning Torah. Okay, it's an excuse. It's not the truth. It's not really with Hashem. I'm calling you, I'm calling everyone, I'm calling myself to come back to the real Hashem. To the real Hashem. You can idolize many concepts in Judaism and to call it Hashem. Learning is Hashem. No, Hashem is much more than learning. Being holy, guarding your eyes, Uman, Breslev, Halakha. Things. It's things. It's great things. It's in, in, in your basket. But there is much more to it. You cannot make a seder only for matzah. You cannot make a seder only with four cups of wine. You, you need to have haroset, maror, you need to have all the parts of, of, the, of the seder to have seder. If your wife is not part of your life, so you missed a very important part in your life. If your children are not part of your life, you miss. If your friends, if people, your parents, your emotions, your memories are not part of your life, dividing and closing and hiding and denying. Many parts of your life are missing. You're ignoring those things and they're going to rot. You're not going to use them. 
You're not going to deal, move them. You need to be aware to who that you are and to ask yourself what Hashem wants from me. From me. I am Jewish, I am keeping, I am a believer, I am doing great, wonderful, all great. Do as much as you can. What does Hashem want from you? What's your mission? What's your point? What's in the world? See what people are, are talking. Look what the world is saying. What the reality is, is expressing to you on what you need to work. You see people that don't know how to behave. You see people that are cursing. You see people that are insulting other people, depressing other people. You need to learn. You need to take something from it. To take the education from it. To work on yourself on those things. That you won't be like those sinners. That you won't be like those violent people. That you will never going to humiliate a person. That you will never going to disgrace someone in... Not in public and not alone, that you're never going to leave a person to cry and to go and, and to cry alone into the night. Never, ever, never, never. I don't think that hap it happened even once. I don't know, Hashem will forgive me. Always, if we had an argument, I would stay awake. If, even if my wife went to sleep, I would stay. I would ask her for forgiveness. I would beg. If she would go to sleep, I would stay awake. I would do tshuva. I would tear myself to pieces. Wouldn't let that argument to stay. And I would ask for her forgiveness and to explain to me what have I done and what was so wrong. And I canceled my plans and I destroyed my theories and I broke all my imagination and I, I bought myself a connection to reality. Someone asked me what's the difference in my connection to Hashem now when I'm on my own after being 12 years under the wings of my rabbi now that for something like six years I'm on my own and I'm doing the Amuna project, so one of my students asked me, what's the difference in your life perspective and the way that you serve Hashem today? What's the difference between today to six years ago when you were under your rabbi? So I told that person, Today I'm serving Hashem only based on love and, not, and with no fears anymore. I'm not letting fears take control on my life, on the decisions of my life anymore. I was very petrified, very terrorized, very, very forced to do certain things by the obligation of the religious world, of the community, of the Frum world. Today, I don't let it poison my life. I'm not keeping less. I'm doing much, much more. But I'm doing it because that I found my inner will to be observant and to keep. And not because that I'm being forced to. I'm doing things out of love and not out of fear. That's a difference. It's a huge difference. So I'm setting tickets. You want uh, coupons for Pesach? Hashem will bless you. I believe that it's in your power to become angels, much higher than me, much higher than my wife. No doubt, we burned years on on doing things in the wrong way. You need to be honest, and you will see what Hashem is planning for us. You cannot imagine to believe in Hashem is to believe in someone that is above nature that can make wonders in your life. Wonders, wonders, miracles in your life. To believe in Him with passion, with excitement, with desire for life, to make changes in the world, to make a change, to bring redemption, to live the dream, to be with it you are, not to be scared of people, of opinion, what they're gonna say, what they're gonna do. Throw all those negative thoughts to the side. Go. Drive straight. Dream. Live your life. Do your thing. You're afraid to live your life because you're afraid you're going to go off. You're not going to go off. You're just going to rise. You want to keep. You want to do. 
You don't want to go off the derech. You don't want to go off the way. So why that you're going to fall? You're not going to fall. You're going to just going to rise and, and stand and you're going to be stronger and more stable if you're going to let yourself be. Keep and do. Do whatever you want to do. But do it because you want to do it and be proud of yourself and be happy with your success. And when you're not able, so understand yourself. Have compassion. Understand it. And work on yourself and build yourself and stabilize yourself and work on yourself that in the future you will make it. You will succeed. It's better to do a little bit less right now but with the right intention of building and developing than to try to do too much and losing everything in one shot. It's better to build yourself one day after the other, one step after the next, and that's the most safest and nicest and, and satisfying way of them all. I bless you to succeed, to find true happiness, never to give up on your dreams, and that all of your hopes and prayers will be answered as soon as possible. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.